that. What is so, SN1 and SN2? I was just going to explain that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, the difference basically comes, there are a few differences, but the main difference, what gives it away, is your electrophile. So, do you know the difference between primary, secondary, tertiary, right? So, what would that be? The chibiro prime? It's tertiary, right? So, if it's tertiary, it'll go through usually the uh, SN1 mechanism. And the different, the main part of SN1 is that there are two steps. And the first step is of a carbocation, and the second step is the attack on the nucleophile. Okay, and in SN2, what happens is you don't form a carbocation, you would have a direct attack in all in one step, and your chloride would be the same time. Okay, um, okay but you will learn more about that in your lectures. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. But let's talk about this mechanism in more detail. So, when you're drawing arrows, make sure that you have the tail of the arrow starting bond and then the arrow is showing towards chlorine which tells me that the electrons are going from the bond to the chlorine and that tells that's why your chlorine will have a negative charge right because it's hooked up the electrons and that's why the carbon has a positive charge okay. so what can you tell me about the stability of carbocations is this a stable carbocation the first one
what gives away the piston electrophile? What's the answer? Positive charge does not always. Positive charge does not always. Sorry? Where the electrons are going? Yes. Usually what I look for is what's leaving. And that's chloride, right? So your leaving group is usually associated to your electrophile. So if you see what's leaving, that's your whole whatever was with before. Okay, so second step, water is a nucleophile. And you have to show the arrow starting from the electrons on the oxygen going to the positive charge on the carbon. And so that's an attack over here. And then you have oxygen is now bonded to three, two hydrogens and a carbon, so it has a positive charge and you don't want that. So another water molecule will pick up a proton and how you show that. The electrons are going to the hydrogen and this bond has to break. So the electrons from this bond are going back to the oxygen and you have a bridge. But you'll have two lone pairs These aren't going away ever. For you take organic one and two, I think organic two you cover like 104 total like reactions in organic two. You're gonna cover a lot in organic one when we get to it. So get used to the idea, get used to it right now of learning back this, what they are, because this will be a lab and in class really important. One thing somebody pointed out to me, um, so that's a good point that yes, it can make hydrochloric acid, but remember hydrochloric acid, it's gonna be a strong acid, so typically it's gonna dissociate um, in your solution there. But what we're doing today is we'll go into it a little bit more too, but I wanna point this out while we have the mechanism. We're adding sodium hydroxide to go to 10% of the reaction. So this sodium hydroxide will attack this as a base and it'll get rid of it. So we're not going to have, if you've ever looked at your organic textbook and looked at it and seen acid uh, catalyzed hydrolysis or anything like that, we're going to abstract this. So it's not going to be able to go in and recatalyze or anything like that. So the reaction that we're going to be looking at, then sodium hydroxide is going to come and pull that out. Um, so I just want to point that out. So you shouldn't have that like in your report in the first initial part of this reaction that we're particularly looking at. There shouldn't be any extra acid in there. Um, because the sodium hydroxide is going to come and take it out. Uh, if you want to take pictures of the slide, you can 